Good morning. It is Tuesday. It's not Monday because it was bank holiday in the UK because we had a bajillion bank holidays in May this year. Um, so I'm starting my week of meals on a Tuesday for you. Just made myself a smoothie. The weather is beautiful in England at the minute. And this week I haven't been food shopping. I haven't meal prepped. I haven't planned. I've been trying to do that and have been doing that, but we have building work going on and busy stuff going on with life. Maybe you can hear the builders outside. Um, so this is gonna be a week of lazy, unplanned, just whatever is in the fridge, whatever I pick up from the shop. Because half the time I'm really organized and I'm on it and I meal prep and I meal plan and half the time I just don't. We just eat what's left over. Maybe we've had a shoot so we've got lots of food. Um, and I just go through what I've got and then go to the shop and pick up bits here and there. So that's what this week is gonna be. I think it's gonna be a lot of smoothies because I'm craving them at the minute. Um, this has the Form Nutrition protein powder and some like flax chia mix thing that I've been using and lots of fresh berries. Yum. Lunchtime, I have leftovers. So we have pesto pasta from last night with asparagus with this beautiful shaped pasta. I don't know what the shape is called, but it's so fun. And this is the pesto, it's a really yummy pesto. The wild pesto, wild garlic, vegan. It's a very strong flavor, so it's very garlicky, obviously because it's got wild garlic in it, and it's a bit more like lumpy, but I really, really love it. And then I fried some asparagus in garlic, and I put some cheese in there. Oh yes, and to top it, I'm gonna use this Nourish 100% plant-based Gran Vegan Vegiano, which is actually a really nice vegan parmesan. It's already grated. As long as you don't give it a good old sniff out the packet, that's the thing with some vegan cheeses, it's out the packet, they smell really strong, and then you eat them and they're okay. And then we've got a Richmond burger that I've chopped up and chucked in there that we had at the weekend, because we had a little kind of a fake barbecue. So we, had, we bought food, like burgers and sausages, cooked it inside and then ate it down in the garden because we don't have a barbecue, we don't have a patio, so we had a fake barbecue for the bank holiday. And this is my lunch. Mm -mm -mm. I love asparagus. Post-lunch snack. Snacker Jack, salt and vinegar. These are the best. So good. Honestly. 10 out of 10. Mm. It is impossible for me to have lunch without having a cup of tea and a sweet treat afterwards. This is the, I think the Dove's Organic Digestives. Mm. Hello, I am rushing because I have to go out in half an hour and I'm just going to throw a load of stuff in a frying pan. I have so little time that I don't have time to put you on a tripod. Um, I'm going to see Mamma Mia this evening with my mum and sister. It's so funny because our Christmas presents to each other, me and my sister got my mum tickets to see Mamma Mia. Memory card ran out. Sorry if there's mess in the background. Um, Alex is ill today, so I've been running around like a bit of a headless chicken. And I haven't had time to clean up. There's all these, that's okay. That's just all the mugs from the builders because the builders have got them, got them all tea. So that's all that's behind me and Alex's lunch. Yeah, we, funnily enough, um, got, each other the same gift and we went to see Pride and Prejudice sorted sort of on Friday and we're seeing Mamma Mia tonight and tonight is Tuesday so it's just so funny. Um, I'm just gonna fry up these mushrooms. I just nipped into M&S really quickly and this is what I mean by just being a bit chaotic. I'm gonna make enough that I can have some tomorrow. So these are the exotic mushrooms. I'm just gonna fry these off quickly and chop them up. But the Pride and Prejudice we saw on Friday was absolutely amazing. I don't think it's not showing anymore, but maybe they're gonna do another, I don't know, maybe they're gonna be traveling and doing more elsewhere. But my mum did say she thinks that that was the last show. I don't know if she meant it was the last show in Hall for Cornwall or in general. 
I have no idea. But it was so funny, essentially. It was Pride and Prejudice, except uh, modernized, and it was so funny. So it was like a comedy. And they just basically took the storyline of Pride and Prejudice, but pointed out all the hilarious um, tropes in there. And it was all acted out by an entirely female cast and they played every character. So they would switch between, which is so difficult. I can't imagine having to switch between voices and costumes and they were going back and forth. And it was so, so funny. I loved every second of it. It took a moment to warm up to, because I was like, wait, what is this? I don't understand. And then I really got into it. So I'm gonna fry up these mushrooms, maybe throw a bit of garlic in. And then I bought these, which are so good from m &S. It's called the Grains and Greens. This has bulgur wheat, green lentils, peas, kale, and green beans with a mint dressing. You can have it cold or hot. So I'm gonna fry mushrooms, tofu, and then chuck that in there. And that's gonna be my dinner because that's all I've got time for. And I suppose some people might think that what's the point in cooking all this if you've not got much time. But I just find I feel better if I actually cook a meal because I could have easily just cut, bought a ready meal or something from M&S, but it just doesn't make me feel very good. And I enjoy actually eating nice food. So this should be ready, I think, in maybe 10 minutes. Then I'll have 15 minutes to eat it. I'm all ready, I'm all dressed, got my hair, pinned back in a bun because I couldn't be bothered to anything else in this dress which I'm borrowing from my friend which is from Meadows and it's very floaty and big. I ripped apart my entire dressing room trying to figure out what to wear because the dress I wanted to wear I put on over my head because I was rushing and pulled the button off the front so that's great and then I've got my Chanel handbag so this is my outfit of the evening. I'll show you when my dinner's ready. There's my 15 minute dinner. Delicious. Mm. Good morning, it's Wednesday and um, I just made myself a really quick breakfast because it's one of those mornings. So I've just got myself some of that Alpro Go yogurt, which is in the mango flavor. My favorite flavor is passion fruit, but I feel like they've discontinued it or else I can't find it anywhere. Mango is really nice too, but the passion fruit flavor is so good and it's really high in protein. And then I've just topped it with some pomegranate blueberries and seeds. Um, I have a, an unhealthy and expensive addiction to the pomegranate in M&S because that shop is on the way like home for us and it's always there. It's kind of the sort of place that you're just like, well, I just need to nip in and get something. That's the shop that it is. Um, and it's quite easy to just nip in and out. There is a little, but that car park, if you know, if you live in Hale or near Hale, the little car park and little in general there is always so rammed that I just can't deal with it, whereas m and is a bit calmer. And I always nip in and I'll get something else. And I see the pomegranate, I'm just like, I just love the taste of it so much. Mm. a luxury breakfast. And I've just made myself a cold brew, which is essentially making filter coffee, um, no, like a cafetiere of coffee with cold water a day before. And then you put it in the fridge and it's delicious. The building work's starting up again, so I'll be quiet. But if you want to see the recipe, it's on my Instagram or TikTok. <laughs> Just got to Truro and I forgot to film, but I snuffled a bag of popcorn. And I'm going to be meeting a friend at two o'clock. I'm pretty hungry, but we're going to the Cornish Bakery, I think, at two. So fingers crossed they have some kind of snack or something I can have for lunch there. I'm going to... Um, true fabric now if you've been following along with my renovation stuff to order our curtains i think we're going with this fabric i might change my mind i'm having like second thoughts which is not great because i've been sitting on it for so long um and then i'm gonna get a haircut so i'll have all glam lovely hair because right now it's greasy and slicked back in a bun <laughs> i'm filming what i eat in a week and this is the remains of my croissant that i just scoffed so <laughs> i'm having a cappuccino and a croissant fresh new hair can you even see it's so dark in this um, car because the lighting. Oh, there you go. So 
root free, fresh, beautiful blow dry. I go to, go to Goldbird in Truro if you're wondering. My hair has definitely grown because usually when I have it blow dried, it's like up here. So that's really exciting. I have never been hungrier in my life. So I've went to Habaneros because I didn't have a proper lunch, did I? I had um, a croissant, which is not lunch. Got a Rio, which is the best fizzy drink in my opinion this lighting is just great so I didn't really have lunch which is the reality sometimes for me maybe I'll do this potentially better so I'm excited for this burrito I got Alex one too um to take home for him that's worth waiting for because it takes a long time to dye your hair in hindsight I'm not gonna have an appointment at 4 p.m. I just can't do it. I had this feeling last time where I was like, I'm so hungry, because it's seven. Oh, excitingly, we ordered our new curtains for the green room, and I got a quote for our bedroom. I need to just find the right fabric, and then we can order the ones for our bedroom too, so woo! But I'm gonna eat this, maybe watch a YouTube video in the car. Go to Habaneros if you haven't, if you are based in Cornwall. One of my favorite takeaway foods ever. Mm. Good evening, I've just got home, excuse the mess in the background, and I'm having the remainder of this pomegranate. Maybe this is excessive, but like I said, I have an obsession. <laughs> and I regularly just eat a whole punnet. This is my bougie behaviour. And it's lovely to see my hair, it's actually growing. I want it to get back down to when it used to be really long. If you've watched me since Brighton, you maybe remember how long my hair used to be and I've <clears throat> nursed it back to health and I love the colour we didn't bother um we only did this sort of top so sometimes I dye it all the way down and sometimes I just kind of leave the warmth at the ends because that's what my hair was kind of like naturally before I started dyeing it I dye it to get rid of the grey but um yeah I only dye the end parts maybe every two or three times because I quite like this it almost looks like it's just sun kissed Maybe I should do some highlights at some point rather than one block colour, would that be too scary? I've never done that before. Anyway, I will see you in the morning because I'm going to have this, a cup of tea, and go straight to bed because I have had a long day. Ah. Oh. oh! Snack attack, I also have this from m &S. These are the sea salt and balsamic vinegar lentil curls. These are delicious, highly recommend if you love airy kind of like crisps. Love them. Yum. Good morning, it's... <gasps> oh my god. green smoothie i'm not going to chat to you though because the building work is happening it's quite loud but we've got banana tropical smoothie mix frozen fruit some of that flax blend ag1 greens full of vitamin and form nutrition protein powder good afternoon it's lunchtime and i'm having leftovers from the other day i made this was it Monday, tuesday wednesday um it's just mushrooms and tofu and that M&S grain. Mmm. Yeah, the M&S like grain and tofu and kale and stuff. I'm not sure it's gonna be enough because it's almost like I left like a third and I ate like two thirds. So I eat this and see how I feel. I might have something afterwards. Mmm. I've loads of kimchi. Bit of a post-lunch snack attack. I always have to have something after lunch. So I got Alex these the other day, <laughs> but he hasn't eaten them because he was ill. I was like, I'll get you some energy bars kind of thing. So this is the Pippa Nut Dark Chocolate Almond. These are so good if you haven't had them before. <gasps> so amazing. And then the Itsu Seaweed Thins. I absolutely love these. I always give Roxy one too. Roxy, do you want one? She knows. You can't see her. Look at <laughs> Bobby, you know what this is, don't you? Your little seaweed treat. <gasps> you don't want it? You normally always have this. Yummy. Okay, she doesn't want it today. More for me. And a cup of Earl Grey tea. 
Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sip it after having the seaweed. That would be weird. I wanted to show you a nice delivery that I got yesterday. I'm very excited about it. If you've watched my channel for at least a few, a year or beyond, you will have noticed that I always have the rose gold case to fi Apple watch strap. So I had this case to fi strap since Brighton and I've only just upgraded it. It's still in perfect nick. I've only upgraded it because I have switched to a silver Apple watch. Um, the strap actually lasted better than the watch did <laughs> because my old Apple watch, because I wore it so much, I think I knocked it quite a few times and it stopped charging, it stopped reacting in the same way and this, is what, this works so much better. And this time I went for the silver and I absolutely love how it looks. It's the first time actually I think I had heard of Case Defy all those years ago. Um, I think maybe I'd seen their phone cases, but the first thing I ever purchased from them was the strap and I love it. So many people ask me where it's from because it looks like you're wearing a normal watch, which is my personal style. I really like that because it makes it less sporty and more kind of, you can wear it with everyday outfits. So I will leave a link to it down below. I'm gonna show you some of the phone cases I got as well. You can use um, my code. I got the code a little wrong. So all we have to do is click the link in the description and the promo code will be automatically applied to get 15% off Case Defy. If you've been eyeing this up and you also have a smart watch, then they have so many different styles of watches, not just uh, straps, not just this one. So they have lots of different patterned ones if you like more fun printed ones. Or if you're like me, they have lots of different varieties of this. They have it in the gold, they have it in the silver. I know they've got like the thinner style of links. Really, really love it. And have I shown you this? I don't know if I've shown you this, but I love this phone case so, so much. I'll leave all of these things linked below, but you can see, I was gonna show you in here, not only are these cases extremely shockproof, I had one of these on my phone when we got into our car accident. My phone flew across the car and it was completely fine. Um, lots of things broke <laughs> in the car, like Alex's glasses flew off and broke. My phone was totally fine. It's the first thing I thought. I was like, oh wow, the shockproof is actually, <laughs> it's, it really does work. That's the, the proof in the pudding. If you look closely, you can see all of the um, post-consumer re-case to buy pellets that they use to make their phone cases. So Case Defy is really interested in using post-consumer waste and not using as much virgin plastic in their products. You can even search on their website for their Recase Defy products specifically. And 65% of their products are made from plant-based materials and post-consumer waste recycled plastic rather than virgin plastic, which is obviously very important. This is my other one, which is lovely peaches. Peaches, yeah. Um, very summery, I just really loved this case. So, so cool. Absolutely love this one. You can tell there's a theme, a nature theme here. So I've gone for daisies and fruits. And then the other one, I only actually noticed this when I got them, when they all arrived. I was like, wow, you definitely have a specific theme that you enjoy. This one, I'm very excited actually. I'm gonna swap it over. This is a mushroom bone case. Look at it, the psychedelic mushrooms. They're so fun. Absolutely love this. I tend to go for that kind of theme and they have so many phone cases that are florals and nature themed and fruits. So you can kind of have that little bit of self-expression with your phone case because your phone is with you all the time. But the really cool thing I wanted to show you as well was this strap. So some of you know that my phone was stolen when I was in London and I, was very interested in getting a strap when I go traveling. So if you are living in a city or if you're going traveling, then they have an amazing range of straps to attach to your phone or wrist straps. I also have a wrist one. This time I got this gold chain because my um, someone I'm working with when I was in London, she had this strap attached to her phone. I'll show you exactly how she wore it. Um, I think she just had it on as practicality when she's like, you know, working, she can put her phone on like this and then she can use it when she gets an email or a message or something. And so I was like, wow, that's so cool. I really want to get one of those. And then my phone was stolen right out of my hand. And so I knew immediately when I came home, I was like, I need to get one of those straps so that if I'm in London, I can wear this underneath my clothes um, or underneath my coat or whatever. And if I'm, you know, going to get an Uber, because that's how it happened for me. 
um, I was just holding my phone and someone just swiped it. So it feels really safe if you've got this strap on. Also, it's just very practical. Um, you can also just chuck it in your bag and you know where it is. They have so many different straps like this. So I'll link some down below, but I wanted to show you that little haul very quickly and my discount code. So you can go check them out if you haven't and do a little bit of a, a shop for the basics, the practical basics, because that's what we need at this stage of our lives. <laughs> I'm having a bit of a snack attack because it's half four. And to be honest, I just don't think I've eaten enough today. Bit of one of those weeks, you know? So I wanted to film this video actually, because I, I've sa I said this in maybe the one, did I do one recently that was a bit of a cupboard clear out or was a bit like lazy? I do like to do some of these videos where they're a bit more planned. I um, like do a bit of a meal prep, meal plan, go food shopping and stuff. But that only happens half the time with me. This is my personality. I'm split in two. Part of me is really organized, wants everything to be sorted and just so, and then part of me is quite disorganized and haphazard. It depends on my workload, it depends on my mood. And I imagine that a lot of you are the same. So this idea of perfectionism, where you have a meal plan every week and you always cook from scratch everything and you know exactly what you're eating, is lovely and it does happen sometimes. And I go months sometimes where that's generally speaking what I'm doing, but it isn't always the case. And work is a little bit busier at the minute, which is great. Um, so life kind of ebbs and flows and that can happen when it comes to food. I know that's a bit of a tangent, but I always like to share it because I, I I don't like the idea of people feeling like I just always cook from scratch and always have it together because it just is not the case at all. Um, and sometimes I forget to eat or I don't eat quite enough. And, you know, I was actually in quite a good routine before with eating higher protein. And um, I've not been thinking about it as much recently, potentially just because I'm busier and I forget. But it does make a difference. I notice that when I'm eating higher protein, generally speaking, I'm not as hungry and I don't have this like 4 p.m. dip. But um, today I just, what have I had? I've had like a smoothie. I think it's because my lunch was just not big enough, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna have this Alpro yogurt and I might have a piece of fruit. What fruit do we have with it? Oh, I don't know if I want any of that fruit. I might have a look and see if we've got any nice, oh, I think we do. I think we've got some nice crackers. Yeah. We do, we've got some lovely crackers. So I'm gonna have some crackers with a little bit of vegan cheese. And then I've gotta figure out what I'm having for dinner. Cause I think Alex is gonna have some spaghetti cause his tummy's a little bit funny still. And I don't think there's enough sauce for two. Oh, maybe there is. You know, I might actually suggest to him that I'll cook it. Yeah, I think that I will suggest to him that I'll cook it cause there's mushrooms, there's pepper. And I think that he'll be okay with that. I think I might roast some broccoli on the side. I'll have a think, but I might I might suggest to him that I cook it. And um, if he doesn't want the veg, because too much veg sometimes when you've had an upset tummy can like overdo the fiber and it can actually make your tummy worse in my experience. So I could roast the veg and stir it into mine and not his. Cause I feel like it'd be easy just for us to have the same thing. Anyway, let's make my little snack. Alex has had these cheeses from Honestly Tasty in the fridge for so long and he just never eats them. So I'm going to. He'll periodically get excited and buy these different vegan cheeses. But he, I think he forgets. He forgets that they're there. Oh, this actually looks quite nice. I don't know if I've had this before. There's my nice little snack. I put some salt and pepper on my spread. This spread tastes like the laughing cow cheese. I just figured it out, um, which is really nice. And then this is Violife Epic Mature. Perfect. Time to get some lettuce from the garden. Here's a little um, patio mini update. We have a Cornish wall. I think you saw that in the last video. Um, but they flatten everything. Our step is back. We've had to jump off of that for the last few weeks. We've got our drainage over there. Not really much visibly you can see. To be honest with you, um, I have not been gardening recently. It's been so busy with work. 
so busy with renovating loads of things that oh, it's kind of sad it makes me sad i've like stopped coming down here as much there's literally cat poo in here our cats need to stop treating this like a litter tray <sighs> but yeah i've just not been coming down here so it's my mission this weekend to spend a significant amount of time in the in the garden so here's a little update this makes me very sad things are being dug up i think these need to be protected these are brussels brus no broccoli so i think these need to be protected i've got loads more over there that i wasn't able to plant they're starting to look a little bit unhappy aren't they yeah um look at that that's an empty bed filled with weeds yay <laughs> we have this one which is quite successful really this is loads of rocket and nasturtiums so I'm, I'm gonna pick some rocket now um because one of you did say you can eat it when it's really small but these are really good sizes now so i'm gonna pick that rocket we've got kale over there this nasturtium was just in here already and then this is the purple sprouting broccoli but what what a difference i'm learning so much that this purple sprouting broccoli that's been interplanted with the nasturtiums could be the positioning of this veg bed look how healthy this is with these big ones here how big they are compared to the ones up here that are just planted by themselves i can only assume either this tree i think that's probably a big part of it because down there there's no big tree directly above it but also maybe they're getting nibbled because look at this guy but also i don't know it's a very interesting lesson so let's pick some rocket i'm assuming you can just <gasps> feels like i shouldn't be doing this because these lovely little seedlings this is the thing i struggle with they've been working so hard to grow and here i just come along and take them just for a few ma mouthfuls of salad like it feels rude but look how they've not even been eaten this is like rocket just out in the open not um not being touched i know you can eat nasturtiums i'm not 100 percent sure what they taste like so i'll maybe pick those next time i don't know if rocket grows back and then these have really grown there's a few things that have been nibbled over there we've got spinach which is really growing now and then these sugar snap peas i think i might need to move so that they're more you know they can attach themselves to the what you call it obelisks but look at these they have been really eaten though i don't understand how they're getting eaten inside of these cages um but these are the brussels sprouts i think they're going to be fine are they brussels sprouts or are they cabbage but look they're like bursting at the seams and then we have all of these lettuces which are massive that one's getting nibbled yeah these ones are also getting a bit nibbled look they really are growing it's going pretty well these ones are looking quite good even these ones that really i thought were gonna be done for have survived it's not a perfect vegetable garden look at all the weeds and all the mess Well, this looks a bit funny what is that stuff that looks almost like it's diseased with something got the goods i just want to make a little side salad makes me um mixture very happy and also a little bit like sad when things are being eaten one thing i will say though is growing your own veg in this way in a proper way which i've not really done before really makes you appreciate how when you buy like a big bag of salad or kale or something like just how much goes into that well sorry you are pitch black yeah it really makes you appreciate just like growing i don't want to take all that lettuce because it's like you've just put the effort in to grow that it just yeah it really has it does teach you a lot and it makes me think about when um, we have children how much i want to learn about growing vegetables and my own food in large part so i can teach them so that they can appreciate the value of food and where it comes from i just think that that's important so yeah it's kind of i think ever since the builders have been here i've just stopped going down there as much because in the daytime it's a bit awkward when they're here and it's kind of like my mind is on that so hopefully i'll have time this weekend but yeah food's looking good nearly ready That funky red light it's the 
sunlight reflecting on our car um, lights. So this is a very simple salad, but it's all homegrown. That's wild. I just put some basil from our basil plant, which we've got in the kitchen, our rocket and lettuce, just a teeny bit of this olive oil. And there's a salad that's literally just leaves, but hopefully it'll be ultra tasty because it's from the garden. That makes me very excited. That's so cute. This is the sort of situation where I seriously wish that our patio was done. Cause like, this is like an Italian feast that we could just dish up and have outside. Like how nice it with a glass of red wine. Ooh, red wine. You know, like yeah. how, you shouldn't have any red wine, you're ill. Like how nice would that be Al? So mm. not long now. Is there anything better than plain tomato spaghetti? It is very good, isn't it? I like how much you You told made. me to do that much. You asked me and I agreed. I'm buying those Sandra tomatoes again. That's entirely homegrown. What is it? It looks very healthy. Lettuce and rocket and basil, all from Oh, the rocket's ready. Yeah. <laughs> Taste it, look. Mm. Do you want any veg or are you good? No veg. <laughs> Nush? Nourish? Batteries flashing at me, of course, <laughs> just at the final hour. No. Oh no, sorry. Am I weird that I don't like cheese on pasta? We've had this chat on here. Let's quickly Have we? eat before it dies. Quick. Quick, 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 quick. quick. What's it taste for like? Me. Okay, well. You give your verdict for two. Mmm. Best salad I've ever had. <laughs> Is it just plain? It's a bit of olive oil on it. Oh. Did you grow that? <gasps> Where did you grow that? Oh my god, it tastes so good. Mm, very nice. I had a post in a snack attack. Yay! <laughs> and I had, <laughs> Alex, please stop. <laughs> He's got post in a zoomies. I had tortilla chips. I had Colin caterpillars. And I'm going to have some chocolate. Does this happen to anyone else? Happens to me. I think it's um, pre period and pre ovulating. I always get a bit hungrier. <sighs> Hormones, they're okay. Don't, don't beat yourself up. These things are normal. I'm watching the ultimatum Queer Love and it's so great. I just messaged my sister, I left my phone there. Um, I just messaged my sister just saying, isn't it so interesting watching the women in relationships compared to all the other relationship TV shows? Because if there's a relationship reality show, believe you, I'm, believe me, I'm watching it. And it's <clears throat> actually kind of amazing to watch one with women because they actually talk to each other and they actually validate each other compared to some of the uh, heterosexual love shows like Love Island or even the other ones on Netflix. Sometimes I get frustrated watching them because it just feels like I'm watching a series where it's, it's just a show about women getting so frustrated by men's inadequacy to understand emotions, validate them, and be respectful to them and all these things. Obviously that's a generalization because there's lots of TV shows and relationship shows where there are women in them who do awful things or, you know, aren't great. But a lot of it, the themes in like maths, in Love Island, in all of these shows, a lot of the themes and the overarching theme often is the men just cheating on the women, gaslighting the women, belittling them, emotionally abusing them. And it's quite difficult to watch. Also, just on a small level, the, the men just not understanding how to communicate their emotions or listen or engage. And there's definitely relationships in this show, don't get me wrong, the ultimatum, um, the one I'm just watching, where they have, they have their issues. But just generally speaking, the fact that they all are quite open about their emotions and they all talk to each other and say what's happening and voice it and then they validate it and they give them space to express it. It's very, I don't know, it's eye-opening. It's amazing to watch a show where they do that because... It's not something that I've seen in the other shows. So yeah, if you haven't watched it, absolutely love it. It's great. I'm already on episode six. It's such a good show. I love a relationship show. <laughs> Happy Friday. I'm so excited it's Friday. I'm making a smoothie again though. Sorry, this is an exceptionally boring sequence of days, but I have one more banana. It needs to be used and it's quite warm, even though it's not sunny. It is like muggy and quite toasty. 
So I'm probably gonna have the exact same smoothie that I made yesterday. So, banana. Something I was going to ask, because I did do a what I, not a what I even with, a, um, I'm struggling. I did a week of workouts recently and not many of you saw that video so i will link it if you're interested it was a really fun video to make and i really enjoyed putting it together because i feel like exercise is just as important in my life as food um obviously i'm very passionate about food and veganism and cooking and stuff but i am also very passionate about exercise especially when it comes to mental health because for me, it's the one thing that has seriously, I don't know, it seriously saves me when I'm feeling down. And I talk a lot about food and what I'm eating, but I don't share as much about exercise. So go check that video out if you're interested about my workouts for the week, making it realistic and making it normal, because I know lots of people who share workouts online are fitness influencers. And I love fitness influencers, don't get me wrong, I follow those of them, I love them, but they work out a lot. Um, they have very amazing physiques and bodies and, that can sometimes alienate you a little bit because you're like, wow, they only do those workouts to look that way or maybe some people are sharing unhealthy habits. I don't follow people like that. I only follow influencers who are sharing very realistic approaches, but it can feel a little bit alien because of the way they look and because of the way they exercise and how much they exercise. So I just thought I would share that about that video if you wanna go check it out, if, if you're interested in seeing a more realistic view. What I was gonna say is, in these what I eat in a week, would you be interested, please let me know down below, would you be interested in seeing my workouts as well? So I just sort of slot them in there. Um, if you're not, fine, but it would be great to hear and maybe I'll try it out next time because I'm a normal person. Fitness is an important part of my life, but it isn't what defines me and I have, I feel like I look like a normal person. I've not got like ripped abs and all that. I just, I love exercise. I'm strong, don't get me wrong, I'm strong. I've got some muscles. <laughs> But yeah, I just thought I'd ask, so let me know. I'm gonna blend this up. It's got some protein powder in there, some flax seeds. What else should I put in there? No, that's it. Yummy. Oh no, greens powder. AG1, Athletic Greens. For all my goodness and pro and prebiotics. Mmm. Cheers. It is lunchtime and the battery's flashing. Is this the new one? It's lunchtime and I have got some more of this. I don't know if I showed this already in the video. I think I have M&S grains and greens because I bought two packets. Alex is gonna have the other half. So I've got half of that, half a packet of black beans, cucumber, lettuce and a rocket from the garden. I just gave some to Tom, my brother-in-law, and he can take that home to enjoy. We've got kimchi, a load of kimchi in the middle, and then I've drizzled over some tahini, some seeds and lime juice and sriracha. So easy, easy lunch. These are my favorite lunches. I kind of call them nourish bowls. And I was just trying to explain to Alex because he was trying to figure out what to have for lunch. If you're struggling to have, figure out what to have for lunch, if you've got salad in the fridge or vegetables, I try and think of it as have some kind of grain, some kind of, yeah, nice grain like this. It doesn't have to be flavored. It could be a packet of rice, quinoa that you've cooked up. Have some salad, so uh, rocket, lettuce, any, any, literally any bag of salad or even vegetables. So cucumber, tomatoes, fried vegetables. The list is endless depending on the time of year. In the summer, I love salady bits. In the winter, maybe some more roasted vegetables. Have some kind of protein. So if you're vegan, tofu, black beans, chickpeas, lentils, literally any protein, vegan meats that you can buy. And then the topping is whatever you want. I always love to add some kind of fat. So tahini, avocado, oils, dressings, because it brings out the flavor. And it actually, fun fact, if you're someone who is nervous of fat because of diet culture, etc it actually helps you to absorb the nutrients from the vegetables. It's really good for you. It's what people eat on the Mediterranean diet. Nobody is getting fat on olive oil and avocado. It's a load of nonsense. That is not what's causing problems for people. Um, it's really good for you and it's a great way to absorb other nutrients. And I love to add fermented food to my meals and seeds because it adds variety. So it's really easy to chuck some seeds on top of your food and to have fermented foods like sauerkraut, kimchi, to add on top as well because that's so so good for your gut and I have added some sriracha because it's spicy and flavoursome. So this is something I will have all the time and it's just the thing that makes me feel the best. It tastes the best. Oh I put some pesto in there too. 
Um, it tastes the best and it makes my body feel the best. Mm. If I was a celeb and I had like a private chef, every week I'd get them to make me like a salad bar of like different grains, fats, um, proteins, vegetables that were seasonal and I would just have access to that. I wish there was someone local to me that did that that I could buy from because in Falmouth and Truro there's Sabzi which does that kind of thing and I absolutely love it and I wish there was somewhere in Hale but alas there isn't Sabzi, please come to Hale. <laughs> Yummy. And I've just forgotten, I'm also gonna have a can of Hearth Yerba Mate. I think I've got a discount code because um, funnily enough, they contacted me and turns out the owner went to school with Alex and <laughs> they messaged to say, hey, do you want to receive some? And then they messaged after me like, by the way, we just realized that I went to school with your husband, such a small world, um, but it's basically an energy drink that um, gives you caffeine. Has it got caffeine? Yeah. So it's naturally caffeinated, so it doesn't give you the kind of high in the crash that maybe coffee does. So if you're someone who can be sensitive to coffee, this could be a good option. Um, so I'll read the back. Yerba Mate's naturally caffeinated herbal infusion, originally from the rainforest of South America. It's famed for its energizing, focused feeling without the jitters and crash, good energy only. It's vegan, non-GMO, naturally sweetened with juice and recyclable. So I absolutely love this. So highly recommend. I think they gave me a discount code. So I'll link it below. Is it not mate, not mate? Oh, yeah, the mate. Thank you. Yeah, the mate. It's very yummy. <laughs> and we have them most days, to be honest. Of course, obligatory post-lunch tea and a snack. I had my dinner, I had leftovers and a glass of wine with some olives. And we were just doing a taste test of the Cheddarton. I don't rate it. I prefer Epic Mature. So if you're gonna get a vegan cheese from Violife, Epic Mature is my fave. It also melts amazingly. I don't know how this melts. The texture is very chewy and it tastes a lot like coconut. I don't think I'd buy that again. <sighs> it's a shame, want, I was looking forward to it. Same, if you want the best tasting vegan cheese, it's the Cathedral City. Um, and I've tried them all. Best, you, you, you must know by now. There's nothing that compares to the Cathedral City in terms of the texture and the taste. And my family agreed because they tasted this when I bought it and they were all like, that's the most tasty yeah. vegan cheese that they've had that tastes, it kind of almost, I feel like if you were to put this on a cheese board with people who weren't vegan, people would just think it was a different kind of cheddar. They wouldn't necessarily go, oh, that's vegan. Disagree. Because it just tastes like a sharp cheddar uh, or something. I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. Not ma not a fan of the Cheddarton by life, I'm sorry. I love you, but I'm not a fan of that. Epic Mature, however. What's it trying to be? Amazing. Yeah, they've missed the mark. Yeah, Epic Mature is really good. It is, it's more similar to that one than their other ones. This doesn't melt as well though. Because so I'd say by life is more like, quite, what's the word like? But this melts creaminess in your mouth. You cut, I don't think I, there's another, vegan cheese that has That's the creaminess creamy. in your mouth like this. I think, I still like the cocoa one and it's a shame it's, it's almost in less Oh yeah, the places cocoa one's now. really good. You can only get it in like Waitrose. I'm gonna make some popcorn and have a bath. That's my Friday night plan. popcorn? Yeah. I bought some popcorn kernels, I really fancy it. It's been ages. Oh. Yeah. I have shared this before, but in order to make popcorn, I put about a tablespoon of coconut oil into a pan with three popcorn kernels the lid on you wait for those to pop then you add a third of a cup of popcorn kernels take it off the heat for 30 seconds and then put it back on a medium heat and let it pop away and it does help because it kind of gets to the right temperature and you get even popping fingers crossed it's been a while since i've made popcorn actually <laughs> so i'm hoping this goes well and should yeah it should pop really evenly rather than sometimes if you don't do it that way it burns or you get loads of popcorn kernels left over so yeah, all three have popped, so adding this in, tossing in the coconut oil, and wait probably another 20 seconds, and then I'll put it back on the heat, at medium heat, and it should start to pop straight away. Isn't that right, Bob? Yummy!
it's been a week of smoothies this week apparently. I am loving the smoothies because it's so hot. I just got back from a walk with Roxy and I'm so hot. So it's all I fancy and I've got myself my coffee that I need to finish the rest of. Last night we went for a barbecue and it was so nice. Um, my friend just moved house. So it was really great to see their new house and they cooked I think it was This Isn't Sausages and Burgers and they made all the salads vegan, which was so thoughtful and it was so tasty. I think it's like the first proper barbecue of the year for us. I know we had like a little bit of a picnic kind of barbecue with um, Alex's brother when he was here, but it was the first like barbecue on a barbecue of the year and it was so hot and we had such a fun evening. And yeah, I think um, today will be the last day because it's the end of the week. So I won't film tomorrow, but I think for lunch I'm craving tofu scramble or tofu salad. We'll see. It's lunchtime. Well, it's shortly to be lunchtime. And I am, oh, I can't decide what I'm gonna have now because I've just seen this tempeh and that chicken. So I really wanted to have a tofu scramble, but now I'm thinking, should I make like a really lovely toasty? I had a lovely toasty yesterday. Mmm. I'm wondering if I have, that's what I'm going to have. I've decided. I have decided. I'm going to fry some tempeh. I'm going to get some of the bread. And I'm going to put it in a sandwich. With maybe some chipotle mayo. Kimchi and vegan cheese. And if you can see milk in the fridge. Because I'm probably going to get cancelled. That's for the builders. Not for us. <laughs> It's a little bit soggy because of the kimchi, but it smells and looks incredible. I'm slightly paranoid about this burning the insides of my mouth, but I'm gonna risk it all for you. Definitely making that again. And the best part is I'm having like a delicious toasty, but the, the fermented, fermented foods make it so healthy because it's got kimchi and tempeh in there. Yum. I think I'm gonna need the knife and fork. <laughs> Good evening. It is time for a ready meal because that's what I fancy. So I'm having the red Thai sweet potato curry. I'm all sniffly because I was sanding and I took my mask off for a minute and it's all up in my nose. <laughs> and I think Alex will either have the roast dinner from Planty or he will have something like, we've got these meals he bought the other day in Costco. The chicken korma curry. He might have something like that. Or we've got another planty. No, I could probably just have one of those. Because I actually don't have a cold. I've literally just got loads of sandpaper. Sandpaper? Dust. <laughs> Dust up my nose. I really rate planty. Not sponsored. They sent these to me. I think maybe they've got a discount from, code for me. I don't know. Probably not. Maybe. I'll ask them. But if, if they do have one, it's in the description box. <laughs> Their meals are amazing considering that they are a ready meal that you put in the freezer they're probably my favorite in all my honest opinion so give them a go um i'm gonna whack this in the microwave for eight minutes from frozen and then allowed to stand brill <gasps> yummy 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 in my tummy is this curry Smells really good. <laughs> Here it is. What was your rating? You just tried it. Um, when did you spill that out of spice. the spice? Even the rice is like all nicely flavoured. Mm. I've just not tried a um, meal, pre-made uh, meal, like, uh, what's it called? Uh, ready meal. I mean, I wouldn't really call them ready meals. They're not the same as ready meals because they're like, proper cooked meals, but I've not had one that's this delicious. 
because yeah. they're all very thought out. It also gives you ideas because we never use like I've had sweet potato in curries before, but we never do it because it seems like a faff, and we always have the same things. And it gets but it's not like they're bulking out with like carrots or the recipes no. are the same. They're all very individually made and individually delicious. Like someone's just made this for me in single portions, so I'm all for it. And I actually always want to have some form of planty stocked in the freezer for these kinds of days. Mm. What should I have? Whatever you want, babe. To end the video. No! Oh my god! That's frozen! Yes, that's why I did it. Right. Alex is going to have all plants, spicy Szechuan noodles. Oh my god, I hate you. Stop! Alex! Stop it now. Alex, no, seriously. <laughs> Oh, get away from me. Anyone else's husband, treat them like this. This is, it's like I've got constant, okay. <laughs> someone okay, constantly fine. bullying me. Fine. No more. Fine, I need to end the video. So if you want to go check out Casetify's stuff, the link is in the description. You want food on you? Oh, I've missed I you. I nearly that one. Check out the link in the description for all the cases and um, straps and my lovely watch strap which I've been wearing all week. Love it, look at my lovely new nails. And I'll see you in my next video. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're enjoying what I eat in a week. Give me suggestions for the next one, whether you want workouts, whether you don't, what themes you like. I think you've gone the wrong way. <laughs> Bye.